Our God is still on his throne and ruling the affairs of man. Even as he does not change, his truths have not changed. Thankfully, God still has a people which proclaim that old-time religion setting forth his sovereignty and the old paths of truth where we can find rest for our souls. Welcome to Word of Sovereign Grace, a ministry of Paradise Primitive Baptist Church in Arlington, Texas. Get your Bible, call your friends, and sit back as we open the King James Scriptures to explore the glorious Word of Sovereign Grace. Here's this week's message. It is indeed a pleasure to be here with you. I appreciate all that each of you mean to us, the hospitality that you've extended to us. That, uh, it's just far more than we could ever repay you. I've been permitted, my wife and I, to uh, be with you. Uh, many of you for years, some of you for not too many years, but it just seems like we've known you all of our lives. I was telling them on the road the other day that when the churches came together after the vision that they'd had for like 40 years, I got to meet people, and this is one of them. I, I did not know uh, Brother Alton until the churches came together because back 40 years before that time, somebody had messed up. Somebody had caused a division. And because of that division, uh, part of them met one time and part of us met another time. And so I didn't know them. And yet, when I got to be with this brother after about 10 minutes of experiencing, I felt like I'd known him all my life. And that's such a wonderful thing to me. Uh, I, I hope we never in our lives experience that again. Because uh, it's such a blessing to be all together pastor that we had at Elk Creek where our home membership is. We, we had a pastor out there that was on the other side of that that I didn't even know until a few years ago. And he's one of the dearest friends I have now. So I ask for your prayers and I certainly don't want to say anything that would detract from anything that Brother Alton has on his mind. I look forward to being with him and certainly appreciate the chance to be with him anytime that I can. I call your attention to a passage of scripture found in the 23rd chapter of the book of Proverbs. It's a, a simple expression, but it means a great lot. You know, there's not anything that's put into the Bible that's not of importance. The, script, uh, the Bible teaches that all scripture is given by the inspiration of God for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, that the man of God may be thoroughly furnished to all of it works. It's not saying that these things are put there by man so that man can enjoy them. It's saying they're put there by God so that man can receive benefits from them and in such a way can, can learn and can honor <coughs> and glorify his God. That's the purpose. In Ecclesiastical letter it says the whole duty of man is to fear God and obey his commandments. In the fearing of God it doesn't mean that you fear them in a, a worldly sense as, as being afraid, but rather you have a reverential fear that you give Him all honor and all praise and you're here for the specific reason of serving and honoring Him. This is what we're here for. This, this is the obligation, the responsibility that we have to honor and serve the true and the living God. 26th verse of the 23rd chapter. My son, give me thine heart and let thine eyes observe my ways. <clears throat> when we examine how that the Lord works with His people, and we have a talk about this early this morning, and I even got to thinking about it deeper, because this is important to me. Man, in their doctrines of the world, and I call them the doctrines of the world, because I believe that they are, are different than what the Lord teaches from time to time. But in, in, the, in the doctrines taught, it's taught that man has a great deal to do with these things. Uh, some would advocate that, that, that man must, must work in order that he have eternal salvation. Or that he have, if you will, a time of salvation or a salvation here on earth. Others advocate different things, but they advocate, advocate a great deal of the works. And yet I had a man tell me one time, he says, well, the way that you 
that it sounds like your doctrine is you don't believe in works. And I want to tell you for a fact, I believe in works. We have a lot to do. But we don't have a lot to do in order to be a child of God. We don't have a lot to do in order to live in a world of glory with our God. We have a lot to do in order to honor and serve Him because He has put these things in our hearts. In the Ephesian letter, in the first chapter, He says, He hath made us accepted in the Beloved. He's made us accepted. You know, you hear, you hear the word accept a lot. But a lot of times you hear that word accept where it says, you have to accept. Well, precious ones, I'm here to tell you, if I understand anything about the Scriptures, you accept because He has made you accept it. You accept because you have the ability to accept, and He gave you that ability. You know, uh, it teaches of two natures in the Bible. It, takes, it teaches of the natural nature and the spiritual nature. The natural nature is something that the Lord put there for you, and you can, you can decide things naturally. The spiritual nature, it says, is completely different than the natural nature. You have nothing to do with the spiritual nature except the Lord give you that ability to do that. Then you're able to exercise spiritually. You have no uh, enjoyment in the Lord except the Lord give you that enjoyment. Then you can exercise these things. And I believe in exercise. I believe in works. I believe that it's necessary that we, we do anything we can to honor and serve the true and the living God. And we have this inclination or this desire because the Lord has given it to us. I want you to examine for a little, little while, and I don't want to take a lot of time, but I want you to examine the heart. I want you to think about what he means by the heart. He does not mean this blood pumping organism that's in our bodies that controls our physical functions. That's not what he's talking about here. He's talking about the inner being of us. He's talking about a place that He comes in and He and He works on that part of us and He causes us to be sensitive to these things. He causes us, us, us to want to, to seek Him. He causes us to want to serve Him and honor Him. He, he breaks these things down of this stone that we build up within us in a natural sense and gives us a different sense. Gives us a spiritual sense and causes us to serve and honor Give me thine heart. He can take the heart, but he prepares that heart, and then you exercise that. You have this ability, therefore you exercise that. Let thine eyes observe my ways. Over in the Colossian letter, there's a, a scripture that I use quite often. Anybody that hears me very often knows that I, I, I like that perhaps better than... I, I think each one that tries to speak... Uh, uh, pick scriptures out that they really do kind of lean on. And this is one that I lean on because it's important to me. Third chapter of Colossians, the first verse. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above and not on things of the earth, for ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Now, examine this if you will. If you then be risen. How are you risen? You're risen because, precious ones, you have a risen Savior. You're risen because He has come into your heart and He has revealed these things to you. And because of that, you can serve Him. If you then be risen, seek. What does it say in one place? Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. That's not talking about eternity. That's talking about here and now. This book wasn't designed to prepare us for eternity. It was designed to prepare us for our daily lives. We know what kind of trials and tribulations we go through. We know all of these things that we go through that give us troubles and cause all of this confusion and all these problems. And the Lord knew that too, and so He gives us these things that we might use these things in order that we might overcome these things. You know, when you're raising your children, you... Uh, chastise your children from time to time, not because you hate them, but because you love them, and you chastise them so that they might make better boys and girls, that they might make better men and women. You know, you, you would like for them to, to not have to go through some of the things that you experienced. If, if you have a situation, anything like mine, I've gone through things that I just assumed my boys didn't go through. Now, it, it, it appears that uh, they're kind of hard-headed like I am, and I certainly am, and, and, and so they're going to do some of these things. But the Lord...
Lord knows what we're going to go through. He knows all of these things, and so He prepares us in this way. And He does that by going into our inner being, into our heart. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, and not on things of the earth. In the Hebrew letter in the 12th chapter, he says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Precious ones, he knew what we needed. He still knows what we need, and He's still there watching over us. It's a comfort to me. Whenever my dad passed away, he, I was so fond of him. I relied so much on him, and I missed so much being able to call him and to discuss things with him and to go over those things. But I stood by the side of that tomb, and I began to look at this body, and I began to think about that. And I could see a body there, and I began to realize that's just a body there. He's not there anymore. I'll tell you, we have a God who is not limited to leaving someone in that tomb. We have a God who that soul and that spirit goes back to when they die. Those bodies are there by themselves, and that body goes to the tomb. But we have a God who has the strength to raise and crown those vile bodies. He reunites that soul and that spirit with that body. Precious ones, that same body, He reunites that soul and that spirit with Him, and so shall we ever live with the Lord. That's what the scriptures say. And so I had a comfort when I stood there realizing my dad wasn't there in that casket. He had gone back to his father. He had gone home. He didn't suffer anymore. He suffered a whole lot in the last few weeks that he lived. But he didn't suffer anymore. He didn't have all those things to go through. We're the ones that need to be pitied. We're the ones that need the help. We're the ones that need the grace and mercy. And that's what the Bible is for. <coughs> it's to prepare us. Whenever you hear the gospel, whenever you hear the good news, this is telling you, I know what your troubles are. I know what your conflicts are. And I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you. Seek you first the kingdom of God. <clears throat> but he says, set your affection on things above and not on things of the earth. For you are dead. Dead how? <coughs> dead to sin. How are you dead to sin? Because he's made you alive. He says in the 12th chapter of Romans, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. That's now. That's not in eternity. That's right now. You present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. He doesn't give you more than you can bear. He says, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me, for my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. And you shall find rest unto your souls. I know I'm getting off of what I want here. But, uh, I got to thinking about it. In, in the book of 1 Corinthians, uh, there's a familiar scripture in the second chapter. A lot of this, we sat back there in that kitchen and talked about this morning. So I'm kind of uh, being a little repetitious, I guess. But it's some things I've had on my mind. In uh, 1 Corinthians 2, in the 14th verse, he said, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him. Why are they foolishness? Because he only has the natural nature. The Lord gave him that natural nature. He also gave him that spiritual nature. Except he have that spiritual nature, these things are foolishness. You're not here today because you have a natural nature. You're here because you have a spiritual nature. Now, you have the natural nature too, and you have a warfare between the natural and the spiritual. But I'll tell you, precious ones, it's my opinion that the spiritual nature has won over because you're here. You're here to serve the true and living God because the Lord has impressed that upon you, giving you that desire, and because of that, you want to you serve. I, I told the brethren, We've been visiting since yesterday about noon. I told the, uh, uh, the brother yesterday afternoon that when I was in college, I, I, I'd gone to the Primitive Baptist Church all my life. was a member pretty early in my life. And I had people tell me the reason you're in that church is because you've always been in that church. And that troubled me. troubled me greatly. You know, people don't know how they can hurt you sometimes when they say something, but that really did hurt. 
And I didn't really have an uh, answer to that. And when I was in college, I made up my mind that I, I had to resolve this issue. I, I went to every church I could find. There was a few that I didn't go to, but for the most part, I went to a lot of them. I'd go to singings because I was here there were singings. It wouldn't matter to me. I just always liked to sing, and it, it wouldn't matter to me uh, what church it was. I, I'd get to sing. One time I went and sat for two hours because they sang in groups up in the front and never opened my mouth. But uh, I never did go back. But anyway, I, I, I like to do those things. But I went to different churches and I, I listened to what they said and I tried to try to study what their what their text was and try to follow these things. And I was thrilled to death to come back. Because I felt like all along that I had found the truth and the truth is where I wanted to be. If you didn't if you don't feel like that you find the truth, then perhaps you need to be somewhere else. But when the Lord reveals these things to you, then you need to stay there. You need to you need to work at those things because when you do that the Lord blesses you for that. <clears throat> but he says, The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, he can't know them, because they are spiritually discerned. In other words, there is a difference between the Spirit and the flesh. In the 6th chapter of the book of John, in the 63rd verse, said, It is the Spirit that quickeneth the flesh profited nothing. I think about that in a lot of different times when I try to study uh, uh, different things. Now go with me back, if you will, to the book of Proverbs again. And let's look at the 16th chapter in the first verse. The preparation of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. What does that mean? It means that except the Lord prepare you, except the Lord enable you to understand these things, reveal them to you, uh, they're not spiritual. You, you haven't been, you haven't been uh, touched by these, but when you go in your life, when you go about your daily life, and you feel the Lord intervening in your life, you, you feel like that you need the Lord's help, and then you feel the Lord helping you. You feel the Lord holding you up and carrying you over someplace. You have evidence that you are one of His. You have evidence that, that He loves you and therefore you love Him. The Scripture says we love Him because He first loved us. That love didn't start with us. It started with the Lord. We love Him because He first loved us. But He said the preparation of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. Now I want you to look at a word. My dad was a... a a connoisseur, I suppose, of words. He would take a word and carry it as far as he could take it. And I've got to where I didn't do that for a long time, but I got to where I, I tend to do that a lot more because uh, a lot of times it, it's just like I have a I have a book called The Treasury, The Great Treasury. And you may read a scripture and you may think you understand what that's saying. You understand it in an English sense, but when it was written it was applied in a Greek sense. You, you may not understand at all what that's saying. But he says the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. And the key word there, I think, is the word answer. Not the question, not a statement, but the answer. The only way you can answer that is when the Lord reveals that to you. The answer of the tongue is from the Lord. He has given that to you. Whenever you feel God presence manifested in your life, rejoice, precious ones, because He's given that to you. Paul said in one place in the Philippian letter, he said, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. You know, that was a little confusing to me at one time because I thought, what are you, just what are you rejoicing in? You're rejoicing in the fact that the Lord revealed this to you and you can apply it in your life. What good is anything like here in these things if you can't apply them in your life? When you can take these things and relate to them, sometimes I'll be reading something and I'll, and I'll, it, it may be something I've read many times before. Generally it is something I've read many times before. But I'll read it and all of a sudden it will make sense. If I will get an a understanding of that that I never did get before. The Lord revealed that to me. He didn't see fit to reveal that to me before, perhaps. But when He reveals it to you, then you can rejoice. Because here you have a Savior. Just like this brother said in his prayer. You have a Savior who suffered and died for you. 
You have a Savior who's sitting at the right hand of God making intercession for you. You have a Savior that will is it is with you in the sixth trouble and in the seventh trouble He won't forsake you. You have a Savior that's coming back to this earth to raise these vile bodies and reunite these bodies with that soul and that spirit. You have a Savior who the Scripture says is your elder brother. A Savior who has given you an inheritance and not only an inheritance but a joint inheritance with Him. You have a Savior who's going to live with you in a mortal glory for the rest of your life. But precious ones, you have a Savior who sent a comforter, the third part of that triune Godhead, who sent the Holy Spirit down to us to be with us until such time as He comes back and calls His children home. Whenever you get the feeling in this world that you don't have any help, rejoice because I'm here to tell you you have that help. I've often wondered whenever I've got into trouble, why in the world the Lord wasn't there with me. And then it dawned on me one day, I had my back to Him. I was not looking to Him. I was not seeking His help. I had my back to Him. I couldn't see Him. He was always there. But I couldn't see Him. Sometimes I get amazed at the things that I get off on when I don't intend to. In the 21st chapter of the book of Proverbs, this chapter starts off like this. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. A king is one that, that is over a country that has, has power. And yet it says the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. There's only one God. The scriptures teach us that there's one true and living God. There's no other God that we are to serve. There's one true and living God. He's a Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Precious ones, I see the triune Godhead as being God Himself. I see Him in every, every phase that He presents Himself as being God. The one true and living God, the one that we can serve. When we look at our Articles of Faith, we find that that first article of faith says that we believe in one true and living God. You know, there's a lots of gods talking about the world, lots of lords, but there were the little G's and the little L's. You'll notice in the Bible that when it speaks of the Father, when it speaks of anything that is in relationship to the Godhead, there's a capital letter there. Why? Because that's important. Because He's the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. We don't have to go with those things in the little sins because we can recognize them in the great sins. We can recognize them as being our Lord, our God, our Mediator, our Savior, and the one who is coming back to carry His children home. I, well, I won't get on that exactly. He said, The rivers of water, the heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, He turneth it whithersoever He will. There's a doctrine that's advocated in the world of, called free will. And free will states that man has the will to do these things. If you examine the scriptures, what do you find in that? You find a lot about will, all right? But what do you find there? You find that that will is the Lord's will. You, you find that these things are His. We have a natural tendency to want to, to uh, uh, exalt ourselves. To want to exonerate, uh, to want to, to raise ourselves up, put ourselves up on a pedestal. Because we want to be recognized. And we feel certainly that surely there's something that we can do in order that we might be in this position. But the Bible teaches us we are in this position because the Lord has put us in this position. That's how He works in the heart. He doesn't work in the heart because we said He could. He doesn't work in the heart because, because we, we begged Him to, because we had no desire. These things were foolishness to us. But He put this in our heart because He loves us. He put this in our hearts because He will watch over us. He puts this in our hearts because this is what we'll carry the remainder of our life. Now regardless of whether we, we walk away from God or walk to God, when we walk to God, we're going to receive the blessings. When we walk away from God, we're going to miss those blessings. The precious ones, our Lord doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And just as surely as He put this in our hearts, We'll live with Him in a mortal glory. There's not anything in the world that can keep us out of it. Not anything. Right. It says He's above all the principalities and powers. Meaning He's above the things of the world. He's above Satan. He's above all these things. He's overcome Satan. He overcame Him. He overcame Satan. He overcame hell. He overcame the grave. 
And therefore, we can rejoice, just as Paul said, rejoice in, in those things. In the book of uh, Ezekiel, in the 36th chapter of the book of Ezekiel, <clears throat> I'd like to go there for a moment, in the 26th verse, and he says, A new heart will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. In other words, it's not the same. It's different. Here's something new. Here's something that we didn't ask for. Here's something we certainly didn't deserve. You know, from time to time, as I've examined myself, and I hate to do that, because each time that I examine myself, I become more condemned. I don't, I don't examine myself and, and uh, be able to exalt myself because I can see my true self. And when I can see my true self, it's not anything that I'm, I'm uh, uh, happy about. I'm ashamed of it lots of times. Because I within myself don't have anything. If I can tell you anything, it's not of me because the Lord only has control of these things and He can do these things and He tells you these things. But it says, A new heart also will I give you, a new spirit will I put within you. I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh. That is a heart of tenderness. That's not what it speaks about as the flesh over in the other part because that's speaking of the natural man. Here's... When it talks about the heart of flesh, it's talking about something tender. He's tenderized you. You know, you don't you don't work on a, a, a piece of meat before you prepare it in order uh, 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 that it might be hard. You're tenderizing it so that it might be tender. Well, he does the same thing with your very inner being. He comes into your heart and he tenderizes that. He causes you to rejoice because here is something that you can you can can give Him honor and praise for. Here's something that will help you to follow Him and to serve Him as you should. I will give you an heart of flesh. Now, I don't want to be lengthy. I want to go to one more scripture here. Uh, in this, I want you to look at the 119th chapter of the book of Psalms. And I want to go to the 11th verse. He says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. What's that saying? Thy word have I hid in my heart. We can go and we can find in 1 John, it says, For there be three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. We can go over to the book of John, and we can find it beginning, because in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was nothing made that was made. That's plain to me. That's, that's plain language. But there's another word, and that word is the gospel. That word is the good news. That word is what penetrates the hearts of God's children. If you recall when the Israelites were, were going out of the land of Egypt to go to the land of Canaan, they were divided into 12 tribes, the Scriptures tell us, and those 12 tribes... Each had a, a particular sound of the trumpet that they responded to. Whenever this sound was blown on this trumpet, this tribe responded because they knew that sound. I want, to, I, I want you to think about that because we have the sound. What is the sound? Let me tell you, precious ones, that sound is the gospel of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. When we hear that, we're pricked in the heart. And incidentally, there's, there's two phrases in the, in the scriptures talking about this. One is pricked in the heart and one is cut in the heart. Now, there's a completely different meaning in these two. Pricked in the heart means here's that heart that he's tenderized. Here's that heart that he's coming to change from a stony heart <coughs> to a heart of flesh. And we're pricked in that heart. We hear that sound. We know that sound. And we respond to that sound because we can relate to that sound. If we're not prepared... And that sound is sounded, we're cut in the heart. How many did we read about that were, were persecuted and even, even killed because they were cut in the heart? Stephen was stoned to death because they were cut in the heart. But when a person is pricked in the heart, the Lord has touched their heart. He's tenderized that heart. He's caused them to be susceptible to these things. He's caused them to be able to receive these things. He's prepared that heart. And when they receive it, they can rejoice just as Paul did because they know that this is the sound of their Savior. This is the sound of that one who suffered and died for them. This is the sound that He gives them. And they know that sound just as the children of Israel 
do that sound blown from that trumpet. Here was what meant something to them. Here was what was important. Here was what they could serve in their life. And regardless of whether you are old or whether you are young, it doesn't make any difference. The Lord works in your hearts. He doesn't. He's not limited to someone when they get 20 years old or 14 or 12. As I, 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 I've heard from time to time, He's not limited to that. He can come into your heart anytime. He came into He came into John's heart before He ever came from His mother's womb. The scriptures say He leaped in His mother's womb. Let me tell you, precious ones, He's not limited. He comes into your heart, and when He comes into your heart, then you're His. He lets you know you're His. And then you have the desire to follow. Then how do we, how do we profit from this? Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. If you then be risen with Christ, <clears throat> that's what that means. He's prepared you, and therefore you follow. You have this desire. You had your change and your heart changed. I've had people tell me they know the exact moment their heart was changed. I never knew the exact moment my heart was changed, but there was a time in my life when my desires changed. There was a time in my life when I felt like that I needed to serve God and I better do that or I was going to be in trouble. And and, and I fought that, just as Jonah did and others. I, I fought that. Precious ones, there's no need in fighting it because when you go with it and serve your God, he blesses you for it. The Lord has blessed us through so many things. And I look back and I think, we certainly didn't earn that. We, we didn't do anything to earn it. We don't want, as the scripture says in the Hebrew, we don't want a just recompense or reward. Because I know what would happen if I received a just recompense or reward. I've had no destination but a devil's hell. But thanks be to God, i got something better because the Lord has put that in my heart and shown that to me. Let us serve Him in honor. Let us do those things that are honoring to Him because He's prepared us. Let us go forward with these things. I thank you for your kind attention. May God bless you. Word of Sovereign Grace, a ministry of Paradise Primitive Baptist Church in Arlington, Texas. Paradise Primitive Baptist Church is located at 5300 Mansfield Road in Arlington, Texas. Services begin at 1030 each Sunday morning. Plan to come and worship with us. To find out more about Paradise Primitive Baptist Church, visit www.paradisepbc.org. Be sure to visit our website for articles, video, and audio sermons, as well as biblical answers to your questions. Thanks for watching, and be sure to join us again next week. May God richly bless you.